What is up guys? Welcome back to another video. Uh, I know I said that I'd make this video uh, a while back, um, but it's just been really tough. Um, I don't know if you can tell, but this is my right collarbone and that's my left. Um, this is going to be the explanation on what all happened so far up until this point. And I know it's just a broken collarbone, but it's affecting me a lot more. Um, this is just going to be a straight video, no editing, no cuts, nothing. So if you care to find out the entire story about my broken collarbone, stay till the end. Um, so today is Christmas Eve 2020 and it's been a crappy year for all of us. I mean, I can't remember the last time I saw someone say, I had a good day or this has been a good month or anything like that. But, um, yeah, so everyone has their problems and bigger problems than I do. So I don't want to sound like a little baby saying, Oh, boo hoo. Look at me. No, I'm not doing that at all because it's all right. But this is just my story so far. Not this past Sunday, but the Sunday before that, uh, 11 days ago, I went to South Fork MX. And prior to that, we worked all night long trying to get ready. And just, I had to do my fork seals, everything. It was messed up bad. Like my bike just wasn't there. Uh, a bunch of bad things led up to that. Um, like I had to go pick up a, a tire or no, 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 no. I bought a tire. And then I had to go pick up a brake lever and get my tire changed while I picked up my brake lever. Well, on the way there, we it was fine. We get in the parking lot and I realize I forget, I forgot my tire at my house. So I was like, oh my gosh. Went in there, no tires that would fit. So I ended up buying a bigger Maxxis 120 sand tire, which for you to all know, it's just a tire for sand. Um, I never run Maxxis, but Dunlop's sand tires are iffy for me anyway. I don't know, but, um, so I do like Maxxis is better. Um, so I got a Maxxis tire. I was like, you know what? Maybe this worked out good. And then, so we get that change. And then on the way home, I realized I forgot my brake lever. So now I have two tires, which you all are probably saying, oh, you got a spare, you got a spare. Well, a tire actually lasts me a good bit, depending on where I'm riding. So I didn't really need two tires. But anyway, um, so now I just spent extra money on a tire that isn't actually the right tire, and it's just whatever. Now I have a bent brake lever that I can't fix because I forgot it at dry cash. So anyway, we get home and this was supposed, I needed to change my fork seals, uh, my front suspension on my bike. And it usually takes us anywhere between 30 minutes and 45 minutes to do this. And only one was leaking. So we get it and we change it. And there's a lot more problems. My suspension completely clapped out. The metal rod in the bottom was beat in and it was not right at all. But anyway, we tried to do the best we could and we put it back together. And then we realized the second one is leaking. Luckily, we had another set of fork seals, so we just tried to do that. And that one was way easier. Uh, actually, wasn't that bad at all. So we just threw that back together. And then we come to find out, I put my chain one wrong. 
I didn't put it through the guide because I'm an idiot. And the way we had the uh, chain link thing to change the length, it was messed up. So that wasn't going right. And it was only supposed to take us around three hours to do everything. Get ready, get packed up, everything. We started at 1.20 p.m. Saturday and did not get done until 9 o'clock p.m. Saturday night. And you're probably thinking, well, that ain't bad, but it was rough. It was a lot of hectic cussing, screaming, frustration. Like, it was terrible. And my dad even said at one point, we shouldn't even go. This is just bad luck. And I kind of got in my head. He was talking about the bike, but when he said that, I kind of felt personal injuries. So I was like, hmm, maybe we shouldn't go. But I was like, you know what? Screw it. I want a freaking ride. And everywhere up here is closed. So we have to go south where it's warmer and can actually ride. So we packed everything up, not knowing what was going to happen, and we went for it. Drive six hours down there. We left at 3 o'clock in the morning. I didn't go to bed till midnight. I got three hours of sleep. Went down there, unpacked everything, and we rode. We started riding about 11 a.m. And we were just, I don't know, just had a feeling. I went one lap around the track. And my suspension was straight springs there's no compression and a lot of people who don't know stuff about dirt bikes I'm sorry it wasn't working right my bike wasn't not working right everything was fine with the motor everything but it, the suspension was not right at all completely screwed no way we could fix it at the track so I said whatever it was so hard to ride every bump I would hit my front end would just bounce it sucked, but I made the best out of it, and I rode, mainly trying to wheelie through all the sand most of the time, but um, when i land jumps, I'd just pogo stick, bounce, and around, th I thought it was around 4, but it was actually around 3 o'clock p.m., there is three jumps in a row, and... I hit them like this every time. Perfect. This is actually a really safe track. And if y'all haven't heard of South Fork MX, I recommend it. It's in um, Disputana, Virginia. Highly suggest it. It's a great track. Especially for, for me, like where I'm from, West Virginia, you don't have a lot of sand. So uh, going down there is definitely worth the while. Um, but we went down there not expecting we didn't know what was going to happen and then there's three jumps that i put in my last video when i scanned across those three jumps and uh hit the first jump butter fine but when i landed and as soon as you land you have to hit the next jump as soon as i landed my front springs gave up and my back end slid out and i slid right and then i slid left wait Slid left and then right, and then boom, it just took off to the left, and I just went over the side. I remember thinking right when it was happening, I can save it, I can save it, and then I don't remember anything, and then boom, I hit the ground. I was like, oh, crap, and I looked up. I was on the ground like this with my head on the ground, and I looked up. And my dad what didn't see it or nothing because my dad parked right there, like right where in front of it happened. He wasn't looking. He didn't see it, and I just said, oh, thank God I'm not dead, and just laid my head back down. And then I saw two guys, well, I didn't see, I heard two guys run up to me and be like, hey, are you okay, are you okay, hey, hey, hey. And um, uh, that was really cool. Um, I don't know who they were, but thanks to you guys. Um Luckily, this is really weird. There was three Coast Guard EMTs there, so they really helped me out um, getting me off the track and stuff. Um, and there was another EMT there. He was like, you didn't break it, 
you just dislocated it. And they're like, do you want me to pop it back in? I'm like, no, 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 no. Do not touch me. Do not touch me. So they're like, okay. And um, I noticed my fingers were kind of tingly. And that's because it pinched a nerve right where it broke. And uh, yeah, when I stood up from here down on my right leg, went completely numb. I had no feeling, but I didn't care because this thing started to hurt. Especially because they wanted me to start moving it around and stuff. Um, and I was like, no. They wrapped me up in like a uh, an ace bandage. Not ace bandage. Like a, uh, I don't know. Just like sports tape pretty much. And then I was on my way to the hospital. We didn't know any close hospitals. So we actually ended up driving five and a half hours to a hospital. About an hour and a half away from my house. And there we got x-rays and was told it was broken. And then they gave me this. And that, that's it. We came home and um, it's broken. It's not cracked. It's completely separated like this. They say a blood bubble should form and bring it back together. But I go in eight days and most people are saying I'm probably going to need surgery. So, yeah. I'm going to do whatever it takes. I just want to ride again. But it's really depressing because I was one week away from running fire calls and now I can't. I was one week away from having my birthday and now I can't. I was getting my driver's license and... I tried yesterday and I failed it because my arm hurts so bad. And you're probably like, that's dumb. Uh, why would you do that? But I just, I want to drive. I can drive with one hand, but to take my test, I need two. So, um, it's just really tough. I know it's not the biggest injury, but you never realize how much your collarbone actually affects your body. It affects this side. It affects my entire arm, my neck. It just a lot. And, um, it's pretty much it. It's it's broke clean through. My collarbone is in two complete different pieces. And I go back in eight days and see if I need surgery. So uh, I'm going to do whatever it takes. If I need surgery, I'm going to get surgery. Um, I'm not sure what surgery consists of right now. But the break's pretty bad. Everyone I've talked to that broke their collarbone, they're like, this is like one of the worst I've seen. So... I don't know. I'm trying to stay off the medication that they gave me, which I don't know if I can even say what they gave me, but it's pretty strong stuff. So I've just been taking ibuprofen and it hurts. It burns, it stings, but I'm fortunate. I didn't die or have a worse injury. So I'm really thankful for that. And uh, I'm sorry it took me a while to get to this. It's just exhausting. I don't know. It's just weird. But, um, yeah, that's pretty much what happened. I uh, just pretty much broke my collarbone. Um, and if you're wondering my movement, I can't really move it out like this. But I can move it to like here. And my elbow works fine. But uh, yeah, I'm just keep me in your prayers, guys. Uh, this year, my 21 season was supposed to be like the year. I mean, so was 2020, but we'll see how that worked out. But um. Yeah, guys, uh, just make sure to subscribe, and um, I'll give you an update uh, when I go back to the doctor. So just expect a Christmas vlog out of me either tomorrow or the day after. Uh, just have a Merry Christmas, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.